So thank you so much for joining us today for the webinar, See Beyond Boundary, From Hong Kong to the World. My name is Suki. I'm the admissions manager of Hong Kong Baptist University. So uh, I believe a lot of our audiences today are actually high school students who are looking for um, maybe overseas opportunities for their undergraduate studies. Um, as an admissions manager, actually I communicate with students very often. One very common struggle that students have is that um, they find it very difficult to decide which country or which city to go, uh, especially after the beginning of pandemic. Actually, we noticed the importance of uh, not just uh, choosing which university to apply to, but also which destination to go. So uh, studying location is of course very crucial as it will design the kind of culture and experiences that you are going to have. Uh, but however, there is always a myth that if you choose to study in one country, you will uh, actually have to stay for um, the entire undergraduate education and actually you are in a way giving up the opportunities to experience other kind of culture uh, in the rest of the world. So if you do have such worry, I will actually say Hong Kong is an ideal uh, destination for you because actually the education here is going to extend students' boundary from the city of Hong Kong to different parts of the world. So today I've invited two international students to talk to us about the global experiences they have received in HKBU and how the experiences help them to develop a global mindset. Maybe let's allow, uh, allow them to introduce themselves. Hi, so I am Anmol. I am currently in year four of uh, computer science. My uh, concentration is artificial intelligence and I am an international student in Hong Kong and I'm from India. So, yeah. Um, hi everyone, my name is Yarbol. Uh, I'm an international student at HKBU. Uh, originally I'm from Kazakhstan and currently I'm a year three student uh, majoring in the business administration. Okay, thank you, Amor and Yabo, for joining me today. I have to say that this webinar is truly international, not because uh, Amor and Yabo are from India and also from uh, Kazakhstan, respectively, but actually the fact that Amor and Yabo are actually currently now in the Netherlands and in Morocco, respectively, because they are doing an exchange program uh, uh, with an exchange opportunities given by the Hong Kong Baptist University. So three of us are actually in a different time zone at all, although we three are all from Hong Kong Baptist University. So the flow today is that uh, Ammo and also Yabo will share their global experiences with us, and there will be a Q&A section afterwards. So if you have any questions about their journey, feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A box. And then the sharing will last for around 30 minutes. Afterwards, I will give a very short introduction about the admissions of uh, Hong Kong Baptist University, including some admission requirements. So if you're interested in studying with us, you are advised to stay for another 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, Hong Kong is the heart of Asia and also the home of thousands of regional headquarters or maybe offices of some uh, multinational corporation. It has a very high connectivity to the rest of the world. Uh, in Hong Kong, we are actually within four hours of flight uh, from all the Asia major cities. And we are also within the reach of half of the world's population within five hours of flight. Um, actually, there are two official languages in Hong Kong. English and also Chinese. Therefore, you can see here some uh, uh, some of, I mean, actually most of our public signage are in bilingual. In tertiary education, uh, most of the institutions in Hong Kong use English as a medium of instruction. So it attracts lots of talents from all over the world to come to study and to do research. In Hong Kong Baptist University, we put uh, global exposure at a very high priority. Therefore, we offer different kind of opportunities uh, to our students. So um, just like Amor and also Yapo, a lot of HKBU students will consider doing an exchange uh, must-do item in their university life. 
In HKBU, we have over 350 overseas exchange partners and over um, they're offering a partnership and also a exchange program to over 40 destinations, uh, ranging from maybe Asia, Australia, Europe, or to Africa, North America, and even as far as South America. So regardless, if you are looking for exchange opportunities at top university like so, uh, so National or maybe NTU, or you uh, want to uh, look for low cost option like options in China or Taiwan, or maybe you want to go uh, abroad at a very uh, special destination that usually people may not thought, uh, have thought of, um, just like maybe Brazil or Finland. So there are always programs that are uh, being able to shoot your need. Uh, students can apply for a semester long or year long, or maybe a shorter exchange program during the summer. Amo, I know that you are doing, uh, doing great and having a very great time in the Netherlands right now. Would you like to share with us your exchange experience? For sure, Suki, thank you. Um, so maybe I'll share my screen now. I have a short presentation here. So as I have already mentioned that I am uh, uh, Anmol from year four computer science uh, and I'm an international student in HKBU. Uh, currently, I'm doing my exchange at the uh, University of Amsterdam. Uh, so the question is that why did I choose to go to exchange in the first place? This will relate to the same answer that why did I choose Hong Kong in the first place uh, from India? So, of course, it's about learning culture. It's about seeing places. It's about networking and making new friends. And this this whole experience in itself, it's very vibrant and it's very amazing uh, to experience. Um, for example, uh, when I came to Hong Kong for the first time, I came to know that uh, people eat in bowl and they throw the waste in the plate, which is exactly the opposite of what we do in India. So this, these small things uh, make uh, a lot of different experiences within yourself. And uh, this is the reason why I chose to go for an exchange experience as well. Lucky for me that in HKBU, we have a lot of uh, uh, regions that we can select to go for exchange. For example, ranging from North America to Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, everywhere we can go for exchange. Maybe not, not in North Korea, but uh, it's fine. Uh, but more or less, we can we can go everywhere uh, to do our exchange. Uh, for me uh, personally, I chose to come to Europe, and uh, I did the application. Uh, the application procedure it's very easy, so it's it's not as hectic as it sounds. That you have to do an application for uh, going to another place. It is not. It's very easy. Uh, all managed by the international office, um, and. Uh, uh, due to COVID, my uh, application had to be deferred uh, two times uh, because uh, uh, the University of Amsterdam was cancelling the exchange, so they were transferring it again and again. But I did not have to do the application again. So my uh, application was being deferred by international office all the time. So this was good for me because I do not have to initiate the whole application itself. Uh, the process also is very easy. You have to choose a list of 10 universities uh, that you want to go to. Uh, and based on this list, uh, you can uh, just prioritize which university is the first place, the second place, and you can get an offer. Uh, the another big question that uh, usually we have is that, uh, will all the credits get transferred if you go to exchange? So yes, for at least for my case, uh, if you have talked to your mentor, if you have had a good plan throughout your studies, then it is very easy to get all the credits transferred. So I'm doing four courses here, which is equivalent to 12 units in Hong Kong, and I'm getting all the credits transferred. So no worries about it. And everyone who goes to exchange gets a sponsorship from HKBU. So every single one. And the scholarship is optional. So if you are, if you are performing good, uh, if you are good in academics and everything, and if your personal statement is amazing, then uh, uh, the international office will notify you if you get a scholarship or not. Uh, so, I since this this is all this is all what happens in the office uh, thing. But since I'm a student, I will give a small tip to anyone who is going to apply, uh, going to make it to HKBU and then apply to exchange, is that always choose uh, the the list of university uh, in such a mixture that there are some extraordinary university and some not so good universities, so that you end up getting one exchange program uh, at at, the, at least. Uh, because it can get uh, quite competitive at times. 
So uh, let me talk about my um, exchange experience itself. So I'm here uh, in the Netherlands uh, for five months. So I'm doing uh, first semester uh, of this year. Uh, and uh, I have three other friends from HKBU. So I'm basically home away from home. Uh, these are these are my people to rescue and my emergency contacts if something happened to me. Uh, and uh, also, uh, since we are traveling together and, and making all the plans together, so we are there for each other all the time. And uh, yeah, so when you go for uh, when you go for an uh, exchange experience, you get to travel a lot. So the photos that you are seeing in this particular slide, it's all from different countries. So this is from Amsterdam. This is from Prague from Belgium, from uh, Brussels, from Germany, from Paris, so all different countries. So this, this uh, slide speaks for itself that uh, you have a lot of fun when you are doing a global experience. And this is not just true for Europe. I have some friends who are doing their exchange in uh, America and they're traveling equally or even more than me. Uh, and same, same for my friends who are there in Australia. So uh, yeah, I'm not jealous of them, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying my best as well. <laughs> so this is this is all that I have to share, actually. Yes. Um, thank you so much, Emil. I actually agree on your point that this experience uh, usually uh, help us to get to know more friends of the ring culture background, and it is actually very helpful when developing our global mindset, uh, which is a, a key criteria of uh, global leaders nowadays. Um, however, I know that uh, developing global mindset can be achieved not only by long-term like uh, overseas exchange programs. Sometimes, I think short-term programs can also bring other set of experience to students as well. So, Yabo, I understand that you are currently doing another exchange in Morocco right now, but then I also know that you did an overseas service learning back in 2019. So, shall I pass the time to you to talk about your journey at that time? Yes, of course. Um, um, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Would you and, like? Um, okay, great. Um, so uh, now uh, I'm going to share with you my experience as a volunteer um from the hong kong baptist university uh on the service trip to bali island um but first let me ask uh, but first let me uh, start with like short um like short uh story uh, how it all like started um it was like first semester of my first year in the hong kong baptist university actually it was like the second week of my studies so like i'm absolutely new to hong kong i'm exploring it like enjoying my time and then i got an email from the from the university saying that the university is organizing service trip to bali and they are looking for volunteers and I thought like, uh, no, probably it's not for me. It's maybe it's for like senior students or like at least like sophomore students. But then uh, I, I asked the staff and they said that, yes, like even the first year students are like eligible for this programming. So I was so happy because uh, this trip had nothing to do with my like academic background, with, with my achievements in studies. So it was uh, like, it was just a trip for adventures. Uh, for making adventures and the only criteria was like your intention your like willingness to um, to explore the new places so briefly about the application process of the of the programming first uh, it all started with the online application um, Amo said that the application for the uh, academic exchange is easy so now you can imagine how easy was the application process for the service trip so it just took me like five to 10 minutes. And then um, I got invited to the group interview uh, where we like discussed different, um, different situations for the volunteers and successfully. Uh, and uh, I was, I, I was, um, um, yeah, successfully I got into the programming and we just uh, started with our training and preparation. And we had like a couple of training sessions with all the volunteers and uh, with the staff. 
so we can discuss the whole programming and then organize everything in a way that we will not have any problems when we'll be in the Bali. Um, yeah, so uh, we had a we had a direct flight to the Bali, and actually we stayed in the heart of the Bali island uh, in the Ubud village, which is very beautiful. And I'm going to show you some pictures from from Bali as well. Um, but first, uh, let me let me uh, just uh, elaborate more on the volunteering part. Um, as I said, uh, I we did a, we were the volunteers, and our main goal was to teach kids uh, like English. Uh, there were a lot of like primary school kids, and um, but when is but it's it wasn't like really teaching in a way that we just imagine it, but. Uh, it was more like uh, having fun with kids and uh, learning from them because they taught us some uh, some words in their language and also we exchanged like, like the cultural points and it was really a lot of fun together and so um, on these pictures you can see that uh, it's not just like the ordinary class ordinary like english lesson but it is really uh, like a big um, Every day was full of like fun, fun, and also fun. Um, but our daily routine was like um, all, like a bit different. First, uh, we had to prepare all the materials for the lessons. On this on this picture, on the first one, you can see that we did a big like Christmas tree with my teammates. And then uh, the next day uh, on, in the school, we actually used this uh, material that we prepared for the for the lesson. And here on the wall, you can see the already like like beautifully decorated Christmas tree. So um, it was all about like having fun with uh, with kids. Um, and also, apart from like um, doing lesson, we did we did a lot of we played a lot of games. Uh, we did a lot of like teamwork activities together with kids. And uh, on this picture, you can see that the atmosphere there is very chill and very friendly. So um, it was really, I enjoyed every day uh, on Bali Island. Um, but apart from just like having fun and playing, um, we actually contributed to the local school uh, in a way that we, we did some like renovation works on site and uh, we cleaned the wall first we cleaned the wall and um very talented volunteers uh, in our group they they draw this very beautiful picture and it was like a gift from us uh to the school um and of course like going to bali and not like um having uh, not experiencing the local culture would be a big um I don't know, it's, it's catastrophe, in fact. Uh, so uh, that's why we had a lot of like cultural activities, uh, such as uh, flower arrangement. And then we visited the local theater. And also we, we learned to cook uh, local uh, food. And it was uh, like really like full immersion into the culture that I personally really like, I, I just fall in love with the, with the local culture. So, um, and of course, like going to Bali uh, means like uh, just being uh, means like discovering new places. And on these pictures, you can see that we visited the iconic uh, tea plantations uh, on the on the island, and also uh, we went to the local beach, which was like also very nice. Um, yeah, it was actually in the winter. Uh, it was in early January, so like enjoying the sunny weather. Uh, in January was was like something new for me as a person like from from Kazakhstan. Um, so now you might have a question like, uh, what um, was it like for free or sh like should I pay for for all of that? So let me do like the quick uh, calculations. Um, but the thing is that uh, there is nothing to calculate. Uh, there was only one fee. I paid like five. Uh, 500 U US dollars and it covered like everything starting from the round trip to Bali and also uh, all the leisure activities, all the sightseeing, three times meal, accommodation and everything uh, that I mentioned before. So it was like a absolutely like win-win for me and for the 
for the HKBU as like organizing the volunteer trip. And actually it was possible with the help um, of Office of Student Affairs that offered us a very long subsidy uh, for this trip. And yeah, the, the trip, the service trip to Bali was a big achievement for me since, uh, as I said, it was my first year um, in HKBU and I had such a like um, fruitful experience um, with all like with uh, like like minded people from different uh, countries. Uh, we, we were like really international team. Um, there were some volunteers from China mainland, from Hong Kong, from Kazakhstan, uh, from Nepal, from uh, Taiwan. So it was very international team and also like we were in the international um, environment there in Bali. Um, after the trip, um, it was like the trip actually was two years ago. So uh, after that, we all know that the pandemic started and we had no chance to get together. But this uh, this year, this semester, uh, we made it and um, it was our first reunion in Hong Kong after the trip. Um, but the thing is that uh, you can't see me on this picture because uh, I wasn't able to join them as I'm doing the exchange studies in Morocco. But uh, it is like completely um, different story and it is uh, still in progress. So uh, I would be happy to, join, to uh, share with you my experience in Morocco after I finish my studies here. And uh, one more thing to add is that uh, after the, the trip to Bali, um, they actually, um, I, Actually, my university, the School of Business, they organized the Go Abroad, Go Abroad for and Video Contest. Uh, and I tried my, uh, I actually applied to the contest with this photo from Bali, from with kids, for, uh, with Balinese kids. And um, luckily I got uh, second place and entitled like 500 uh, Hong Kong dollars, which is also nice. Um, if we consider all the fun and all the nice experience that I had as a volunteer in Bali. Thank you, everyone. Sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Yabo, for your sharing. Uh, actually, I really love the fact that you highlight that um, the service learning experience you had uh, was actually what you did in year one. And the application was nothing related to your uh, academic performance because uh, a lot of students have a misunderstanding that even if there are a lot of opportunities in the university, uh, they are only offered to those uh, academically uh, high achievers only, but that's not true. Uh, the fact is as long as you can demonstrate your interest, your passion and ability, and there are always some of the opportunities available for students to embark on. So uh, let me go back to share my screen first. So uh, apart from the exchange program and overseas service learning trip, and there are actually also other kinds of uh, overseas opportunities for HKBU students to join. Uh, for example, uh, internship, we have uh, research opportunities, we have uh, field trips, competition, uh, conferences, etc. Uh, Emma, actually, I heard that you're going to do our exchange abroad next semester, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, if, uh, if someone wants to apply for the research uh, also, so if, uh, uh, if you can get enough uh, fundings from the, uh, fundings from the uh, university, you can apply for scholarships and you can select a domain in which you want to research and uh, uh, then you can actually uh, go to another university uh, around the globe that you choose uh, by asking your professor and the professor from the other university to make a research uh, tie-up. And this, this is actually very, uh, I'm very lucky to get selected into one of these because this is uh, an amazing addition to your CV because uh, you, can, you can research and you can learn more about how, how rigorous uh, scientific methods are and for anyone applying for science or even even business or related fields research is all, also an option that one can explore as a, as a global opportunity so yeah very amazing so i thought it is going to happen uh, in the next semester but i do hope that experience 
uh, will change you to be a global entrepreneur, drive on uh, to create a new solution to the community. So um, actually in HKBU, we consider uh, the global mindset, uh, the cap capacity to appreciate the different kind of uh, culture among people and also bridge the interfaces between them. So we actually want to train all our students with the global mindset um, so that they can uh, be able to build their uh, different situations from a variety of perspective and also develop like a trusting relationship with individuals from uh, different contexts. So enhancing global exposure doesn't mean that you must travel outside of Hong Kong. Actually, HKBU put a lot of effort to bring the world to the campus as well by organizing different kinds of international activities to wide students' global exposure. Um, for example, we have Consul General in Residence program, which actually we just finished one yesterday for Turkey. And we also have Global University Theme Awards, uh, International Writers Workshop, etc., etc. So if you are already considering studying abroad for your undergraduate study, I would say congratulations for taking the very first step to be global. And I hope that our sharing today has inspired you to be open to learn and also see beyond the boundary. And maybe you will also find Hong Kong and Hong Kong Baptist University the right place for you to start your global journey. So thank you so much for attending this webinar. And here comes uh, the Q&A section. If you have any questions for Ammo, for Yambor, you can grab the chance right now. And meanwhile, if you are interested in studying with Hong Kong Baptist University, I will advise you to stay because actually we have, uh, right after this Q&A section, um, I will go through the admission information of Hong Kong Baptist University before we officially end this webinar. So let me check the uh, questions we have received just now. Um, I know that there are some questions related to admission. I will probably leave those uh, admissions related questions uh, until the very end after uh, the section about admission. And um, I actually see some questions about the ex uh, experience students have. Um, one student asked, I mean, one audience asked about uh, how long does an exchange program last? Uh, maybe Ammo, did you want to share about this? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, it, it really depends upon how uh, long do you want it to last. So uh, you can, you can uh, when you're making the application, you can choose either to go for one semester, so the first semester or the second semester, or you can choose to go for an year. So uh, basically it, it uh, lasts ranging from five months to one, one academic year. Uh, and uh, depends upon which university, which place you are you are choosing. For example, I think uh, the ex the uh, semesters in Europe are quite smaller as when compared to semesters in Asia. So it really depends from university to university, place to place. But uh, in general, you can apply for one semester uh, or uh, one year. So yeah. And I think there are actually some uh, summer exchange program available as well. So if you want to do a short one, or maybe you want to uh, spend your summertime overseas, you can also consider these kind of uh, shorter, maybe probably uh, two months yeah, uh, no. exchange program. And then we uh, have another questions about the application. Our, our, an audience is asking how should students to show their extracurricular activities during the application. Um, maybe both Ammo and Yabo, you can share whether like, because you two both of you mentioned that the application procedure is very simple. Like if you want to highlight some of the extracurricular activities you have joined, uh, usually how did you present about that? So maybe I can go first again. Uh, so uh, usually, uh, if if you have to demonstrate your extracurriculars, if you're if you're really good at it, uh, the best way to do it uh, is through your personal statement. Uh, and uh, in your personal statement, you can write about how how good you have been doing to the community or to to HKBU or to Hong Kong as a whole. Uh, and um, you can you can also demonstrate what are your your good skills, but. Uh, make sure that you do not talk a lot about these because personal statement is also about showing why do you want to uh, engage in this uh, experience itself. Uh, and uh, of course, in every application that you do in uh, HKBU or for HKBU, you can always upload your CV. And this CV can have 
can has um, uh, can have a list of uh, all the extracurriculars that you are good at. Uh, and I think uh, more or less these uh, do add to advantage uh, for your applications. Yeah, well, do you have uh, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I was about to mention the CV thing because uh, I had no idea about the CV before, like uh, before like applying to HKBU. And if you really have a lot of extracurricular like uh, activities and uh, general experience in general, then it is really a nice way to organize all the activities that you had. So the admission committee can uh, have a can have an understanding of what you did and what kind of experience do you have. So you can consider a CV as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, also you can mention it uh, during the interview. I mean, you should mention it because um, it is not only about your grades, but also your personality itself is also very important for the for the committee. Thank you for your idea. Actually, I, I agree with uh, both of them, especially uh, when if you have a lot of extracurricular activities to mention, probably uh, it's difficult for you to cover all of them in your personal statement or in your interview. Uh, you may want to pick some uh, key extracurricular activity to highlight, to show, uh, to demonstrate who you are or your like personality or your character. Uh, but if you do have a lot and you want to share all of them, uh, using a CV will be a good idea. You may want to categorize all of them. And then maybe if there are really a, a long list of activities to join, then probably you want to uh, list out some of them instead of all of them and try to find activities that are related to the program that you're applying for. And, and again, the activities that who can demonstrate who you are uh, as a person, then probably that will be uh, very good enough. So, and I have, let me see if we have other questions about uh, the experience during staff. Uh, actually, I see a questions about financial aid that uh, we offer to international students. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure whether the question is about uh, uh, international students study in HKBU in general or talking about their exchange and also service learning experience. But maybe Amo can and also Yebor, uh, would you like to share? Uh, actually, you have already mentioned it, but maybe you want to highlight a little bit again about the financial aid you receive for the exchange program and also for the service learning uh, program. Yebor, you, you want to go first? No, oh, yeah. You, okay. I'm good if you. Um, yeah, go, go for it, go for it. Okay, got it, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, for, the, for the admission part, uh, like in general, uh, you, can have a, you can get a scholarship from the university and uh, it actually covers everything. Uh, I'm a recipient of like full scholarship. And so, yeah, during like all three years of my studies, I spent like zero like money from my own pocket. So, uh, basically it covers first it covers the tuition fee and also all the other money that is left uh, after like deducting the tuition fee it is more than enough for like accommodation for like your meals for your travels and yeah having a lot of fun as a student and for the service trip and exchange uh, the same thing the university offers a lot of like scholarship opportunities and um and I should say that the financial aid from the university is quite generous, so you shouldn't be like really worried about it. Just uh, try to uh, do your best uh, presenting yourself like as a person and as a student. And for sure, you you will be like entitled to a nice scholarship from the university and you, you can have a lot of like um, fun being a student with a scholarship. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ammo, you want yeah, to I, I just wanted to add one more one hmm. more thing. So, uh, hmm. so uh, of course, like there are there are university scholarships uh, for for the education and for exchange and everything. Uh, but if you also perform good in your academics, then uh, your department also gives you a scholarship. So, uh, so if uh, um, let's say for computer science itself, my my department also gives me a scholarship if I have a particular GPA. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is also one thing that you can take into consideration. So if if, if someone is not able to achieve a pre-scholarship, they can also make some scholarship after after getting enrolled into HKBU itself. Uh, 
So this is this is one thing I wanted to add. Yeah, Emma. In general, as there is a, um, a unit in uh, Hong Kong Baptist University called uh, a Scholarship and Financial Aid Office, and they are in charge of uh, most of their uh, like uh, financial aid or funding related uh, stuff. So if you are referring to admission scholarship, actually uh, after we finish this part and when I talk about uh, admissions opportunity in, H in HKBU, I will also uh, cover that as well. Uh, regarding the um, financial aid for exchange program, and also for the uh, service learning. Uh, I believe that actually uh, Emma and Yebo also mentioned in the part, like for example, for exchange. Uh, it, honestly, when you are applying to the program and you are given an offer for the exchange program, you will be guaranteed to give, an, uh, give a, a certain amount of money to support your journey. But uh, it is not a full coverage. Uh, this is uh, more a sponsorship, part of the sponsorship, depends on the location of the um, destination that you're going. Uh, but then on top of that, some students may also get a scholarship, depends on the situation, like maybe your performance in uh, interview or academically. And also uh, some students will also uh, apply for additional financial aid support from the scholarship and financial aid office. So I think we have answered it uh, well. And then um, let me see, let me see, okay. Okay, I see a question uh, for, for Yabo, actually. Uh, Were you continue your study during the service trip? Uh, how did you manage to balance the work and study? Probably, um, uh, Yabo, did you mention about the duration of the service trip? I think it's not a very long one, so you can actually do the study together with, uh, with the service uh, trip. Yeah, yeah, in fact, it was a week, just a week-long mm -hmm. trip. Mm. And the good thing about that trip was that it was during the winter break, so it, it didn't like affect my uh, affect my studies at all. So after I, f I finished my first semester, then uh, I had a sub winter break and we mm. went to Bali. So uh, you, you, you really don't need to be worried about that. Um, thank you so much. And I think this is all uh, the questions we have so far, which is uh, uh, about our experience Amo and also Yabo have. Um, if you have other questions, you can continue to make use of the uh, Q&A box to uh, raise your questions. And then right now, I will switch to talk about the admissions opportunity in Hong Kong Baptist University. If you're interested in studying with us, please stay with me. And let me switch the screen first. All right, so I hope you can see clearly. Um, for in case some students are joining us late, please uh, allow me to introduce myself once again. My name is Suki. I am the admissions manager of Hong Kong Baptist University. So um, this is a very uh, typical picture that you'll be able to find online in the search engine if you like type Hong Kong on any search engine. Uh, usually it will feature the very beautiful skyline with a lot of high rise building in Hong Kong in the Victor along the Victoria Harbor. So Hong Kong is actually very famous for its countless uh, opportunities for especially young people, for you to start your undergraduate study here or maybe postgraduate or to start your career uh, in this city. So in Hong Kong, we are actually currently the seventh most competitive economies in the world, which is a very recent ranking, uh, recent statistics. And we are also the fourth uh, global financial center uh, in the world, endorsing the city's uh, financial city's position uh, among Asia. And you can also see that we are very good at growing and also attracting and retaining different kinds of uh, talents from all over the world to Hong Kong. So uh, of course, Hong Kong is a very a city, very busy in a fast pace of life. Uh, but then if you ask me as a local Hong Konger, I will tell you that actually there is another um, perspective for you to understand Hong Kong. So this is another picture of Hong Kong. You can see the very beautiful uh, natural environment we have here. So um, 
Hong Kong was a colonial city uh, uh, under British government in the past before 1997. And we are back to the hands of the Chinese government uh, about 30 years ago. So because of this uh, historical background, we actually have a very good mix of the East and also the West culture. So lots of students uh, be able to find different kind of like, uh, culture and living style here. In terms of uh, education, actually a lot of uh, um, higher education in Hong Kong. Uh, there are, I mean, a lot of institutions uh, offering higher education in Hong Kong are in a very good ranking in the world. So back to our university, Hong Kong Baptist University. Um, usually when our other university are uh, introducing themselves, maybe they will tell you uh, how, how special they are, how unique they are. But in Hong Kong Baptist University, we want to put the emphasis on you. So we want to tell you how unique you can be if you come to Hong Kong Baptist University to study. So Hong Kong Baptist University is named the Baptist because we are founded by the Baptist Convention, but uh, don't worry about the religious background because we uh, welcome all students to come to study with us regardless of the uh, religious faith. Actually, we don't collect any information about the religious background of our student or maybe the staff member. So we are one of the government funded university. When uh, we saying that we are government funded, actually uh, we um, telling you that uh, we have abundant resources in terms of the facilities and also the faculties. So in HKBU, we use English as a medium of instruction. So don't worry, even if you cannot say a single word of Chinese. I believe maybe Amo and Yabo, they cannot speak in Chinese as well, but then it won't be a problem because um, we, uh, unless you are studying Chinese, otherwise uh, all of our classes are actually conducted in English. And our campus is actually located in the city center in a far, very, very convenient and prominent destination uh, location in the city. So right now I want to share with you a very short video for about 90 seconds, uh, introducing you Hong Kong Baptist University. Welcome to Hong Kong Baptist University. later she will be more confident and represent Hong Kong in a competition. A year later, this absent-minded guy will find out his favorite subject. He'll know how to look after himself after a year. Three years later, he'll receive his technology award for the first time. five years. Eight years later, he'll join a famous overseas orchestra. She will have revitalized a historic site and left a mark on the map in the next decade. They'll no longer dance 11 years later, but view their team leader's performance instead. They'll continue to unleash their talent in society in two decades time. Back to the present. The most wonderful story has yet to start. Everything remains unanswered. But you'll have expectations, excitements and hopes. Welcome to another starting line or many others. Welcome to Hong Kong Baptist University. So in HKBU, uh, we understand there are different uh, possibilities, a lot of possibility for students uh, to grow and to uh, understand about themselves throughout their four year of studies. So we are offering all kinds of opportunities for students in order for them to better understand themselves. Uh, here we have a very diversified program choice for students to choose. Um, actually in HKBU, we have seven uh, faculties, including faculty of arts, we have School of Business, and we also have program about Chinese medicine, communication and theme, science, social sciences, and also visual arts. So uh, HKBU is not a very big university. We have around 7,000 uh, undergraduate students, but here we have over 700, 730, uh, 730 uh, faculty members and teaching staff offering a very uh, personalized learning experience for each of our students. So um, as Amor and also Yabo mentioned, you can see that there are uh, lots of experiential learning uh, opportunities for students to 
have a taste of different, uh, let's say different living in overseas or when you're doing an internship, you can have a taste of uh, working in certain industry. So we are offering different kinds of experiential learning opportunities for each of our students. And here I want to share with you a story, a story of one of our students. <laughs> I was never obsessed with becoming an IT professional. I actually set my mind later when I was in my high school, where my parents and teachers and friends endeavored to highlight my strong size in programming, which fostered me to choose computer science. Well, hopefully, they will be always there supporting my dreams to be an innovator. Hi, Salim. Um, I'm Ashan from Kazakhstan. I'm studying computer science at the Hong Kong Baptist University. Hong Kong is a city with fast pace of life, which motivates me to move forward every day. It inspires me to grasp multidisciplinary knowledge and join all kinds of competitions. That is why I actually work with my friends to develop a new app called StudyShare. Here is the app, by the way. It helps students to share their knowledge and it saves your time. Yerke and Abu are my friends and co-founder of StudyShare. I still remember the moment we got in mail that we won the university sponsorship. It's unbelievable. Of course, as a new B2 app development, we've got support from our mentor Flora as well. So the challenge is accepted and mission completed. I'm very thankful as this project trained me a lot to be a real problem solver. Now I'm working as data science intern in Amp Energy, the company that is committed to bring innovation to construction industry and achieve net zero emissions. The skills I'm acquiring at HKBU will definitely bring me steps closer to the world of professionals and a new chapter in my life. So the hardest step is to go beyond the usual. So take a step and join me at HKBU. Uh, actually, this is not a very special story because quite a lot of us students will have a story like this with different kind of uh, opportunities. For example, he did a uh, competition, he had a mentor, he also joined uh, um, internship opportunities. So when talking about uh, internship, I must also uh, mention that we have a career center on campus to help uh, training our students uh, better prepare for the future career. In our uh, most recent uh, employment uh, graduate employment survey, you can also see that uh, we have a very low unemployment rate in Hong Kong Baptist University. So here is a constellation of BU graduates we have. We have students becoming director, creator, uh, entrepreneur, expert politician, ex uh, expert, etc. If you want to join us, you need to fulfill the university entrance requirement and also the English language requirement. So for university entrance requirement, you can use IB, GC, SAT, etc. Actually, we are uh, accepting uh, different kind of national qualification as well, but because of the limited space, I'm unable to list out all the qualification here. So if you want to know more, you need to check our website for the full list. And also for English requirement, again, we accept IELTS, TOEFL, uh, SAT, et cetera. And once again, if you want to view the full list, please check on our website. So we are having our uh, application for the admissions in 2022 right now. Uh, the early round application will be the end of this month. So make sure you submit an application to us if you are interested in joining us next year in September. Uh, if you unfortunately missed the deadline, you will also be able to submit application in the main round or in the extended round. So about the fees and scholarship, um, actually uh, we are um, subject to the university annual uh, review. Currently we are charging student uh, tuition fee of 145,000 Hong Kong dollar. And we try to convert it into US dollar for your easy understanding. So together with the hall fee and also basic uh, personal living expenses, probably you have to spend around 25,000 US dollar every year in order to study in HKBU. But this is talking about if you don't have any admission scholarship at all, if you do receive some kind of admission scholarship, depends on the types of scholarship we are uh, we're giving to you, then you may um, need to spend less money here. So our admission scholarship is so linear based and you don't need a separate application for that. A full scholarship will be at the value of 195,000 Hong Kong dollar, which is able to 
cover almost everything here. So um, thank you so much for listening to us. At the end, I want to share with you our content information. You can find our admissions website and also email address here. So if you want to uh, contact us for further questions, you can write us an email. And of course, uh, right now I see some questions in the Q&A room. I believe I've already answered how to apply to us. You just need to submit an online application. So just go to check this link here and you'll be able to find our application, uh, online application form. And one uh, audience asked about admission result. Uh, honestly, it depends on when you're submitting the application and uh, your completeness of the application. And then selected students may be invited for interview for further assessment. Uh, some program may not arrange interview. Uh, it depends on individual program and which, which program that you are applying to. So probably if you want to, uh, if you have already submitted the application and you are waiting for the result, just make sure you check your email uh, frequency and you will be able to receive uh, email from us when the application result is available. Um, I see students uh, uh, mentioning their uh, result in uh, public examination and talk about to see whether uh, their result will be accepted. Um, I think this is a more or less specific individual cases. I would suggest you to raise that questions using email. Um, actually, if you have already submitted an application, we will reveal it. Um, even if you submit all your results using an email, we will not be able to give you an answer whether you will be given an offer or not, or scholarship or not, because only if you submit an application to us, we will review your document and give your admission answer. And a student is asking whether they should add the SK, SAT score uh, if you're not scoring a very maybe a, not a very high result. Uh, well, I don't have a line for what kind of score you should upload the result, but I'll say that um, um, it depends on whether you are applying using SAT. If you're applying using SAT, then of course you must submit your SAT result. But if you're not applying using SAT, um, um, then I would say SAT is optional whether you want to uh, include that uh, academic result, it's up to your own decision. Um, some students, if you don't have your SAT result yet, but you still plan to apply using SAT, you can also submit your application first with your uh, high school transcript. And if you want to ask more questions about your specific uh, situation, you can also send us an email. So uh, yes, SAT is uh, optional, so I've already answered it. And then early round application deadline, I've just mentioned that is at the end of uh, this month, the 30th of November. So uh, we can take Hong Kong time. So if you're in another location, make sure you uh, mind the time difference we have. And then uh, one last question is whether Chinese passport holder studying international qualification will be considered as international student? No, but you are considered as a Chinese student applying using international qualification. So when you check, uh, you want to check the uh, application details, you are going to the same link because this link is not for international student, but for student applying using international qualification. So regardless if you're international student or if you're Chinese student, you should also go to this link to check the, the, to check the details. But in the application, if you are, uh, are asked being, being asked whether you're a local, as long as you're holding Hong Kong ID card, you should answer no. But if you're a Chinese passport holder, you should, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. If you're holding Hong Kong ID card, then you should say you're a local. But if you're holding a Chinese passport or the other passport, then you should say that you're not local. Of course, we'll further check the, your identity afterwards, so don't worry about that. All right, I believe we have answered all the questions here, and let me see. So, um, okay, one last question is the timeline for Chinese passport holder. Um, I don't have the, the timeline list out on my PowerPoint, but I'll suggest you to check on this website because uh, at the very end part, there is a section called timeline. So you will be able to see the application timeline for a Chinese student. 
So thank you so much for um, uh, Yabor and also Amo for all your time and also your sharing. We really enjoy it so much. I know that we still have a lot of um, uh, students staying here and you may have other questions for us as well. I suggest you to send us an email because we are uh, just uh, already one hour after we start this uh, webinar. So it is about the time for end, uh, ending this webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. And have a good day. Goodbye.